Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be doing AP Physics 1 and we're going to be dealing with tensions on a string of cars, so to speak. And this tends to give a lot of people, including myself, a little bit of a head scratcher at first, but it's not that bad because you need to think about this as force is equal to mass times acceleration and we know the force. Each of these masses is different, but you can think of it in like terms of units, okay? So the first thing we're gonna be dealing with is this 180, that's the force, and the mass, this 180 newtons is pulling all three of these guys. So the mass would be not 20, not 30, but all three of these things put together. So 20 and 30 and 10 is 60 times acceleration. And if we solve for the A, you'd find out that your acceleration is 180 divided by 60. It would be equal to 3 meters per second squared. And that is very helpful because all three of these, regardless of what force is on our each, uh, of the, each of these ropes, we would know that they're accelerating the exact same thing. This guy's accelerating at 3 meters per second squared. This guy's accelerating at 3 meters per second squared. And this guy is accelerating at 3 meters per second squared. All of them are moving at the same speed. It's a train. One part of the train is going to be moving the same as the other part of the train. Okay? So with that in mind, you can solve for each of the tensions separately. Starting with the one in the back probably is the easiest because the one in the back, it has a mass of 20 kilograms and it is only being affected by this part right here in the back. So force of tension one will be equal to the mass, 20, times acceleration, three. So the force of tension one would be equal to 20 kilograms times three meters per second squared. We get that and we end up with the force of tension one is equal to 60 newtons because newtons is kilograms per meter second squared. Okay, now that we got tension one, tension two, we're gonna do the same thing, but instead we would need to think of tension two as both of these are being pulled by this rope in tension two, which means we need to do kind of what we did with the 180. We need to combine the 20 and the 30 to get the true mass that tension two is having to pull, which is much, much more. And that would mean that the force of tension two will equal the mass, which would be 20 and 30 put together, 50, times its acceleration, which it's still going three. So the force of tension two will be equal to 150 newtons. Now, when I was doing this, what made me think like, hey, uh, why, why is this so confusing? And what helped kind of make it make sense is imagine if there's like this little itty bitty string here and it's pulling a Barbie car, something tiny, or a matchbox. That string is not gonna need to be very strong because it's holding something that would be like 0.01 kilograms, a matchbox, and therefore it would not hold a lot of tension if it was just kind of dangling at the end. Or if you think of like the cans at the back of your car for a wedding, they don't need to be held together by something massive like a chain, it just needs to be held together by string even though the force of the car and the, and the string and the cans would be like a lot, the force of this train is a lot, the force of that matchbooks doesn't need to be a lot and therefore the tension would not need to be either. Okay, so you deal with each part separately. The force of this first tension or even this first first one, if you think of there being like a rope right here, is a whole lot and that's because it's gotta hold and pull all of this other mass behind it. Okay, so you deal with each part individually, you add them up, and then you get going from there. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, I will see y'all later. Stay positive. In the next one, we're gonna deal with pulleys and counteracting forces. I'll see you then. Bye.